Good morning, Light City. Man, what a day it has been so far. I am so hoping that you're experiencing God this morning, but I've got to I've got to say it. I got to make a confession. I am over this. I mean, like thank God for technology, but seriously, it's just not the same. Uh I show up on every Sunday morning and feel like a huge piece of life is missing. And, you know, it's the time that we get to spend together, not on FaceTime, not on Zoom calls, but the time that we get to spend together in person. And scripture really tells us this. It says, don't forsake the gathering together. And now I know why. And come on this morning, I want you to blow up the chat this morning. If you two, like me, are over it, uh, you know, let me see it. And I got to tell you, I'm so ready to be back together again. So enough of my rant this morning. It's as much time as I'm going to give it. Uh, the title of my message today is The Walls. Uh, but if you'd let me, I'd like to look at this from a little bit of a different angle this morning. Because truth is, we all have walls. And we all have protective mechanisms in our life where we create false identities to cover, to shield, or protect our true identity because we see ourselves as weak, unlovable, you know, whatever your word is. Uh, and oftentimes, these walls that are meant to keep us safe actually become the prisons that keep us bound. That was so good. Let me say that again. That, uh, you know, the walls that are meant to keep us safe become the prisons that keep us bound, limited, stuck, frustrated, anxious, depressed. And, and what, I, what I mean is, uh, you know, that these manufactured identities, these walls, they rob us of our true potential in our lives. Uh, and, and really the potential is only available in our true God-given identity. And so this morning, you know, we could talk about the steps, the stages, the whys, and the hows, but this morning I had a thought, you know, as I was preparing this week, that instead of talking about walls, I want to talk about breaking through the walls. You know, I'm not interested in the walls, right? I'm done living bound, right? I'm going a new way. I don't want to talk about being stuck. I want to talk about being free because who said the sun sets free is free indeed, right? I don't care how it's been. I don't care how bad it hurts. I want to be free. And I learned something, that it's often the walls, the lies, the traumas, the disappointments. It's these walls that we create that keep us from our true identity, you know, our potential and the way things that we're wanting things to be and what we're wanting God to do in our lives. And now I'm going to ask you to do something today, uh, something big in service. You know, uh, I'm not with you, so don't clam up on me. Uh, but I'm going to ask you, you know, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands or I'm not going to ask you to stand up in the service today. Obviously not because you're there and I'm here. But what I am going to do this morning is I'm going to ask you to take ownership, Right ownership of the lives, ownership of your life. And this morning I need some buy-in because discovering identity, breaking down walls, dealing with past disappointments and traumas, I can only show you the way we have to choose to walk, to walk in it. Now listen, I believe this morning that God has sent me here to help you get your heart ready for God wants to do in you and to you and through you this month. But hear this, this is so important. It's not the job of the speakers and we have amazing pastors, but it's not the job of the pastors. We have great worship, but it's not the job of the worship team to bring breakthrough to your life. In fact, I wanna to announce to you that this move of God, you know, this revival that everyone has been talking about is a B-Y-O-B Revival. And can I get my chat people out there to chat that? This is a B-Y-O-B -B revival. It's a bring your own breakthrough revival, right? Come on, Light City. This is one of those days that I so wish that I could be back in church. I can't wait to be back together so that I can hear the amens and the shouts because the spirit of the Lord is in this place and we're going to go for it today. I mean, come on, in your homes this morning, it's a B-Y-O day. It's a bring your own peace and bring your own joy. Come on, 
wherever you are this morning and whatever is happening in your life, God is with you. And because God is with you, he's more than the world that's against you. So would you join me for a moment in John chapter 5? And this story, this you know, little story that we're going to read should be a great encouragement to anyone who needs a breakthrough in your life. They could do this in your homes right now. Raise your hands if you need God to do something in your life. I mean, anything, anything, absolutely anything at all, right? You don't have to tell people what it is. Obviously, I'm not going to bring a mic to you, right? I'm not going to invite you to come down to the altar. This morning, I just want your buy-in. Just want to know, you know, this morning as you're drinking your third or fourth cup of coffee, do you need God to do something in your life? Well, the scripture, there was a man who found himself in the exact same situation. And he was in the right place at the right time because unbeknownst to him, when he left his house that day, Jesus was passing by the pool of Bethesda. And the scripture reads in John chapter 5, verse 1, it says this, sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. You know, it doesn't specify to us which festival, yet Jesus makes a detour. And verse 2 says, you know, near the sheep gate, because there was a pool near the sheep gate, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda. And so there is a, you know, a meeting within the meeting, right? In other words, there is a, a purpose for Jesus's visit to Jerusalem, yet, you know, within the purpose of that festival he's visiting, he stops by to see about one specific person. And scripture further details that this pool was surrounded, uh, it was surrounded and covered by five colonnades and here, right? Right here, you know, I'll say it again for everybody. Maybe we didn't hear me here, here in your house, here in your car, here, right here, a great number, uh, number of disabled people used to lie in, you know, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, <laughs> you know, the gossips, the addicted, the cynical, you know, if I keep going, I could probably hit each and every one of us. But to be nice, I'll move on to verse five. And this morning, I'll have you notice that we're going straight from verse three into verse five, because in most modern translations, there's actually no verse four. And maybe I'll explain that to you in a moment. But for what I need you to know right now is one was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he'd been in this condition for a long time, you know, 38 years living under this identity, 38 years living behind walls that protect him from the shame or the criticism. And Jesus said, you know, Jesus, you know, well, there's no use in me bothering with him. You know, I might as well go and find somebody else. Or, you know, when Jesus saw him lying there and, you know, learned that he had been this way for a long time, he just said, oh, well, you know, well, that's just Bob over there and Bob's never going to change. You know, Bob's always been that way. You know, Bob's walls are just too high. Bob's just too broken. No, see, when Jesus walked by, he looked for the worst situation and the highest walls, and he went straight up to it. And, you know, sometimes we come to church and we think that God can only deal with the presentable parts of our lives, and so we come to church with our walls up. But a breakthrough happens. Hear me this morning. When you're willing to expose that place, you know, this place. And so Jesus walks right up to that guy, that place, that person, that situation. And he asks the question that, mind you, on the surface seems very obvious, but when he learned of the condition, he asked him, catch this, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? I'm going to stop right there and preach for a moment on the subject. So let's just pray real quick. Heavenly Father, we ask for your wisdom, your revelation, your insight into our lives and into our hearts, God. Desire, we desire this morning, Heavenly Father, breakthrough. And we thank you that you're showing us how we partner with you to experience that breakthrough in our life. We declare every wall, every wall will fall during this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So you know what's, what's, uh, what's weird to me? And... I've never gotten used to this. You know, I've, I've been a pastor for over 10 years now. You know, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it's really nothing, you know. Uh, but it's weird to me how people will come to church, you know, frequently, but 
have absolutely no desire or intention to change anything about their life based on what they experience. You know, it reminds me of the day of yore. You know, the town was little old town of Fort Erie, Ontario. The fitness facility was absolute fitness. And I noticed a guy in the gym named Art. This is an actual guy's name, Art. And Art was big and strong. And don't tell anybody I said this, but he was probably on steroids. And there was this other guy who was there, you know, and I'm not going to say his name since it's Fort Erie. So let's just call him Bubba right? And, and Bubba, you know, Bubba might be watching online, so we'll just change his name for the sake of changing it. But Bubba was at the gym like every day, every day. And, you know, he was there when I got there and he was there when I left. But Bubba didn't have the physique indicative of the fact that he spent the majority of his waking free hours at the gym. And one day I asked Art about Bubba. You know, I said, Art, I, I know this, that Bubba doesn't look like you. You know, Bubba's been here longer than you, and he leaves after you, and he doesn't look like you. And Art said something to me that he probably never thought would be in one of my messages one day. He said, Bubba doesn't come to lift, right? Bubba comes to walk around and see who he can talk to on the treadmill. You know, Bubba comes to check out the girls and the aerobics class. And the aerobics class. You know, like Bubba is a creeper, uh, but Bubba don't want no gains. And it reminded me uh, when I went to art and art was going to train me, and this was years ago. Uh, and I met with art to train me because he was one of the trainers at the gym. And I said, you know, I need you to know something before I come to the training appointment. I said, there are certain exercises I do, and <laughs> there are certain exercises I don't do. Namely, I don't run. On that, I don't jog. Actually, let's just be clear. I don't do any cardio at all. I don't, I don't believe in that. Also, just know I don't do legs. And, you know, I can remember at that point, he just nodded me and was like, okay, you know, I don't do pull-ups. I don't mind dips, you know. And, and I had prescribed for him what I would do and what I wouldn't do. It's like when I went to the dentist and the dental hygienist said, I need to talk to you about, and I immediately interrupted her and I said, I know you're going to tell me that I need to floss. But let me tell you what I've told every dental hygienist before you and for that matter, every dental hygienist that comes after you, I don't floss. You know, you can give me the floss with the little Spider-Man on, on the floss pack, but I don't floss, right? You can show me pictures. You can tell me horror stories. You can tell me how, you know, little Johnny didn't floss and now he has AIDS. You know, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to floss. But it's funny because this reminds me of some people in church. You know, if you sit there and listen to people preach every single week, doesn't matter what I say. doesn't matter how well I shout. I mean, I could stand up there and preach my guts out. And some people, it's like you came into church with this steely resolve, this resolution, I will not change. Now, catch me, there are some things in my life that I would like to see changed. And I've noticed in, you know, just over 10 years of pastoring that most of us love the idea of God changing our circumstances more than the idea of God changing us. And there was a pool in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate called Bethesda. And here, a great number of disabled people used to lie. Now, let me tell you something about everybody you know, everybody you watching this stream. Each of us have a condition, that each of us have walls and the thing about our conditions at an emotional and at a spiritual level are that we're able to hide them more easily than if we were lying by a pool lame somewhere. And it'd be one thing if you could see my emotional state, but I can compensate for that. It'd be one thing if you could see my spiritual state, but you know, I can cover that with fine sounding language. And so, you know, you can, you can live in this condition. You could live at these walls for a long time. And so I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to get out of your way because I don't want to spoil your appetite too much in the middle of this series. But I'm going to, you know, it's what my mom used to say to me, you know, when she would catch me heating up a pogo stick, or for you Americans, the corn dogs, you know, in the microwave at 4.30 in the afternoon. She said, don't spoil your appetite. But I'm just wondering this morning if we could make a mark. 
if we can mark off that area of our life where a wall needs to come down. So for my message today, I wanted to do some scientific research. And so where else do you go for scientific research nowadays other than to Facebook? And, and I searched through feeds and searched through comments for answers to a very simple question. What's an area of your life where you need a breakthrough? What are some walls that you'd love to tear down? And you know what was stunning was that over 90% of the responses, and honestly, I'm probably being generous. It was probably somewhere around 99% of the responses were responses about a situation. You know what? I, I didn't see anybody say, and, you know, and, and obviously maybe they said it, and I missed it. I didn't read through all of Facebook, and it's entirely possible that I missed it. But I heard a lot of people talk about, you know, I need a breakthrough in my relationships because my husband's acting crazy. Or, you know, I heard some people talking about, I need a breakthrough with my child because, you know, they're out of control. I heard people talk about the job that they need and, and all those things, you know, we would love to pray with you about those things. But you know what was strangely missing from the list? Was I didn't hear one person say, it's me. It's my walls. And in this season of discovering identity, I would like God to set me free from me, right? Can I preach at you this weekend? Can, and sometimes we just need to make a mark in our lives and say, you know what, God, you know, it'd be great if you could change my marriage and I want that. And it would be nice if I could get that home that I want and, and I want that. And well, Lord, you know what? It starts right here. This is the place in my heart, in my life. This is the wall. Do the work in me. Create in me, oh God, a, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And Jesus walks right up to the guy and asks him a question. Do you really want to change? Not, catch this, not do you want it to change. Do you want you to change? You know, the man is, you know, actually, apparently, not only does he have a disability that prevents him from walking, uh, but I think he might have it in his ears too, because he doesn't hear very well, uh, because he gives Jesus a response. Now, Jesus asks a question, look at this, do you want to get well? Not, mm, this is good, not do you want to feel better, but do you want to get well? It's important because there's a difference. We can come to church to feel better, but we never get well. You know, we can come to church for comfort and leave unchanged. And that's what this pool represented. It was a place to be comfortable. It was a place where you could be around other people who had similar disabilities and thereby feeling more normal in your own dysfunction. And so by hanging out by the pool, and, and I've been this way for so long that I've given up hope of change. And, and part of this is the reason why sometimes, you know, I have fantasies about going back into youth ministry because they just don't know yet right? They haven't learned or they haven't settled into the lie that says some things never change. You know, they haven't gotten all crusty like us, you know, rusty and crusty and comfortable behind our walls, sitting there waiting for verse four to happen. And you see in the translations that each of you, if you have your Bibles out, you are probably looking at it. And let me teach you something real quick uh, about your Bible translation. Uh, and the, the translation that I'm using to that's up on the screen is the New International Version. Uh, and it's a great translation. I love it. Uh, and if you don't have a, a, a paper Bible, let me give a shout out to the Bible app on your phone. It's great. You know, you can get onto a reading plan and all that, and it's good. And, you know, even if you start with just one verse a day, it's an amazing place to start. You know, you can look at the message, uh, which isn't really a translation. It's more of a paraphrase. And, and the Bible that I learned off, uh, you know, in my Pentecostal background was the New King James Version, you know. And, and sometimes, like my dad, I like to quote verses in Scripture in the King James Version, because if you put a thee or a thou in it, it sounds more spiritual, you know. And the devil can't take a, a thee or a thou, right? And so right here, right in John, right, right here in John chapter 5, and 
I don't know if you can see it depending on, you know, where the, the Bible that you're looking at or if you're looking at a Bible at all. You know, the scripture uh, is, is slightly anticlimactic, especially if you're just reading on the screen. Uh, but I mentioned that in verse 3, you know, we read about this place, the pool called Bethesda right, which is amazing in itself. You know, it means, Bethesda means the house of mercy, and it says that it's covered in five, uh, it's co- five covered colonnades, and five is the number of grace, and so John chapter five is Jesus, who was full of grace and truth. Literally, the embodiment of grace in the place of grace is walking up, and you know, we're not going to preach about that today, because it, we would be here probably till next Sunday, uh, so we're just going to continue to move on off of that, and so we see in this verse here, it says in verse three, here, a great number of disabled are here, right? Here, a great number of disabled, they used to live there. And, you know, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. And then right there, it just jumps over into verse 5. And then there's a note to tell you why it goes straight to verse 5. And here's what the note says, you know. Watch this, it's so good. It says that these people who are sitting around the pool, they came to this particular pool for a reason because... The Bible says in verse four, and you know, this is in some later translations of scripture. It's not in the earlier, the earlier ones. Um, It says that from time to time, an angel of the Lord would come down. And sometimes I think that's what we're waiting for God to do. When we say that we're wanting things to happen in our life, you know, we want him to break through. We want him to come down and, you know, come down, God, and change and fix my situation. You know, would you come down, God, and would you tear down these walls and and come down? And so we could pray for God to come down because it does say from time to time, the angel of the Lord would actually come down and stir up the waters. And, And when the angel would come down and he would stir up the waters, then and the first person, you know, who was in the pool would get healed of whatever was wrong with them. And, and which put this man that we're reading about who was lying on this mat in a disadvantageous situation because when the angel of the Lord would come down, the first one in would win. And isn't that the way that religion works? The first one in wins, you know, the the person with the most titles or the person with the most knowledge or the one with the perfect church attendance. But here's what grace does. Because remember that Jesus is the personified grace of God. He's literally the embodiment of grace. He is the word made flesh that dwelt among us. Jesus walked up to the one who would have been last in line. And he said, you first. And I came to announce that the more desperate the situation, the higher the walls, the greater the opportunity for a miracle. And so if you need something from God this morning, guess what? You're in the right place at the right time, and they would wait. They would wait for an angel of the Lord to come down. You know, God, I need you to give me your joy. God, I need you to give me your peace. And, you know, I remember when my sisters and I were young, and they would be begging my parents for a certain item uh, that they wanted my parents to buy for them. You know, and they're younger than me, so Essentially, they've had lesser amount of time to learn the system by which our parents can be persuaded or manipulated, you know, depending on how you want to put it. And, you know, I can remember these times when I'd walk up to them and tell them, you know, I, I, I would tell them, you know, this is not the way that you're going to get something from dad. And I want to tell you, I want to pull you aside today. And I want to tell you that those things that you are begging God for, those moments where you're begging God for a breakthrough, this is not the way that we get things from our heavenly father. Can I tell you this morning, you don't have to beg him for what he's already bought for you. You don't have to beg him to do for you what he died to give you. You don't have to, watch, guess what? Watch this. Oh, you don't have to convince people. You don't have to convince anybody. When God decides to do a work in your life, it's done. Come on, somebody. You need to chat that. It's done. That addiction, it's done. That pain, it's done. That false identity, it's done. Those walls, it's done. But the man. The man, he, he had some reasons, right? He had some reasons why he couldn't receive. Do you want to get well? And watch this. Watch what the man said. He said, sir, and, you know, I mean, I guess he had that going for him. At least he was respectful. 
He said this, I have no one. You know, and I'm just expecting Jesus to just, you know, at any minute jump in and say, I did not ask you all that. But isn't it crazy how in the presence of an unlimited God, we'll stay stuck in an an explanation of why this wall needs to stay up. Now watch this. Let me be balanced in this because everything that this man said was true. Everything that this man said was a fact, but faith has the ability to override the facts. And that's what he didn't know. And he just started explaining to Jesus the way things were around here. You know, you know, the pool, I can't, and I need somebody, and I don't have anybody, and nobody appreciates me, and nobody loves me, and I have nobody. I didn't have anybody to show me. I didn't have anybody to hold me. I have nobody. I mean, I appreciate the conversation, but you don't know my situation. I have no one to help me into the pool. You know what's funny about that? And, and this is the thing that you have to be a really a Bible nerd to understand. This is so cool. But if you look in John chapter four, it says that Jesus was going through some areas and he comes upon a woman and he says, hey, woman, you know, hey, woman, give me a drink. And for all the you young guys out there, that's a great pickup line, you know, by the way. Uh, and she's like, but you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. And he's like, don't even worry about that. I'm not worried about what people think. Just go on and give me a drink. And he says, and she says back to him, but you don't have a bucket. And ooh, watch this. And he says to her, you know, essentially not exactly in these words, but you don't need a bucket when you're the well. See, I am the living water. And if you will receive what I have to give you, it won't be about what people can do for you. You won't need a bucket. What's in me will get in you and you will, and what will become in you is a well that will never run, that will never run dry. And I feel joy welling up on the inside of me. I feel peace welling up on the inside of me. It says that he spoke this of the spirit. And she said, but you Jews say that, you know, we have to worship in Jerusalem. And the Samaritans say that we have to go over here and worship on this mountain. And Jesus says, you're both wrong because it's not about a geographical location or a situation in your life. This is the place. Those who worship the father must worship in spirit and truth. And so Jesus walked walks up to the man and the man starts telling him his excuses, telling him how he can't get into the water. And Jesus says, don't you get it? I saw that you couldn't get to the water and that's why the water has come to you. This is grace. This is what revival is all about. This is the essence of salvation that I couldn't get to the water. So the water came to me and you know where breakthrough begins? Breakthrough begins the moment that my excuses end. I don't have nobody. I don't know enough. And I've been this way for a long time. And Jesus steps right over his excuses and gives the command. And here's the command, watch this. Because while they were busy trying to get God to come down, Jesus has a very different view of what needs to happen next in your life for change to occur. I mean, real change, deep change, lasting change, sustainable change, evident change. And Jesus, after hearing all the man's reasons, you know, after reading his doctor's notes, you know, that he has no one to help him. And, you know, when the water is stirred and I'm trying to get in, every time I try to get in, somebody else, you know, I notice that all these guys have the mentality and this same mentality has begun to revolve around all these people. You know, they won't help me in. And every time to get, try to get in, you know, they just keep blocking me and they keep blocking my breakthrough. And, you know, it's funny as human beings, that we could always think that we are the exception. You know, my situation is different, right? It's just different. And, and I mean, for her, yeah, maybe, but for me, it's different. And Jesus is simple. Essentially, Scripture says, hearing what the man has to say, he looks at him and tells him very simply, get up. And could it be possible, you know, this is just a question I have this morning. And I'm about to get out of your way that while you're waiting for God to come down, that God is waiting for you to rise up. 
you know, maybe breakthrough doesn't begin. I'm saying, come on, Light City, this morning, when your situation changes, but would you make a determination within yourself that I'm not blaming anybody, I'm not waiting on anyone, I don't need my situation to change. God changed me. God changed me. And that's my prayer is, as we walk through this month, God changed me. Do a work on the inside of me. Living water, you know, spring up a well within my soul. And God says, this is the place where breakthrough begins. This is the place. This attitude is where breakthrough begins. This is the place. It doesn't begin with them. And you know, it's not with them. You know, it's with me. God, do a work within me. I I'm ready for a breakthrough, God. And I'm going to ask you this. Jump on your feet right now, wherever you are. We're going to close the service. And I want to pray for you because I believe that God has a breakthrough in mind for your life. But remember, like I said, this is a BYOB revival. Remember approximately 28 to 32 minutes ago, I reminded you it's a bring your own breakthrough. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the only thing blocking you from a breakthrough, from the breakthrough that God wants to release to you is within you. It's your ability and willingness to believe that it's possible. And I wonder this morning, do we even believe anymore? Or have we learned to live with things that Jesus died to take away? You know, we want to see some things open up in our church. We want to see things open up in our communities, in our families. But I believe it begins first within. I believe that walls come down, that breakthrough begins when I say, God, I'm going to get up. I'm going to pick up my mat. I'm going to leave behind my excuses and do something very simple. Walk. So Heavenly Father, this morning, where every man, every woman, every child, every person under the sound of my voice. We make a decision, a determined decision to break down our walls. Holy Spirit, I'm asking in the presence of every home right now that you would fill and flood our homes, that you would restore to us hope, that you would restore to us peace, that you would restore to us the expectation of the bright future that we once were believing for, that you would restore to us the joy of our salvation. God, we take responsibilities for our own lives, our own walls, our own stuff, and God, we're looking to you to say, God, in this moment, change me, use me, do something great in me as we choose to tear down our walls. God, we declare the breakthrough is right there. And we thank you for it. Before we close really quickly, I want to invite you. If you're new to this stream, this is maybe the first time, maybe you've been in relationship with Jesus. Maybe you've never been in relationship with Jesus, but you're hearing all this and you're saying, that's me. I've got those walls. I, I need breakthrough. And I've been making excuses and blaming situations in my life on everybody else, but I'm ready today to make a decision that will change my life forever. And I invite you very simply to repeat a prayer after me. It's the prayer of salvation. And scripture tells us very clearly that if we confess with our mouths and believe in our heart that Jesus died, rose again to be our sacrifice, our savior, that scripture says we would be saved. And so right now, really quickly in your own home, wherever you are, in your car, as you're driving, as you're listening to this, I'm gonna invite you to pray this very simple prayer and repeat it after me as a confession of our belief in Jesus. Repeat this saying, Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God sent to earth to die, to be the sacrifice for my sins. I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. Come into my life. Lead me. Guide me. Change me. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come to be my comforter, to be my guide, to lead me, to challenge me in every situation of my life. And I thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I just want to say really quickly, if that was the first time that you prayed that prayer or this was a moment of rededication of your life to Jesus, 
You can't see it right now, but our whole Light City family is going ecstatic. The scripture says that heaven and earth rejoices at just one of God's lost children coming back to him. So maybe you can't hear it, but there's a party going on in heaven and that party is just for you. I want to say if you pray that prayer for the first time, would you send us an email, info at golightcity.com and, and let us know that you've made that decision. We'd love to be able to get some things for you. Well, that being said, that's all we got today. I mean, I feel like enough has been done, enough has been said. Now it's our challenge to go and do something with that word. Light City, I love you. We love you. We can't wait to be back together again. We pray that you have an amazing day, an amazing week, that your walls are coming down, that your lives are being changed, and that say this together, that I am made well. God bless you guys. Have an awesome day.